so welcome everyone good morning i think we can start so just before we begin with any teaching let's uh, take a moment to our own self just bringing the mind back home to the breath in the body recording just coming back home to the body using the thread of breath All the restless energies, they come back home. enjoying the breathing The thoughts will want to carry us away, but we'll just stay put with the breathing for now. And this is how we begin to tame the mind. It listens to the command. At the moment, we are just with the breathing. And thoughts are like background noise, they may be, but not giving them attention. So we are going to use a teaching, a meditative teaching, if we want to still keep the eyes closed for our own relaxation, we can do that. It's by 
Thiknathan on going home. What does it mean to be home? And you feel that you are truly there. So we can read the question that has been asked and now his reply would start. Mm. And you feel that you are truly there. You are not being pulled by either the past or the future or your projects, your thinking, because uh, Thinking may cause us to lose ourselves. So uh, the practice of mindful breathing can unify body and mind, and uh, we can uh, find ourselves uh, established in the here and the now. And uh, the practice of mindful breathing can stabilize the situation. It helps us to calm down. Uh, to be truly there and to be aware of what is going on. We are not lost uh, by, uh, by what uh, is happening. We are still ourselves. And um, it's like a, a house with several, uh, several windows and doors. And if uh, we open all the windows and door in a time there is uh, strong winds, well, the wind will come in and blow everything away. So going home is like um, shutting the window, shutting the door, uh, so that the wind will not uh, penetrate. And uh, the eyes, the ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind, there are windows. And we shut these windows. We don't look anymore, we don't listen anymore, uh, we don't think anymore. We just follow our in-breath, our breath, and we are comfortable in the house. And we may like to make a fire in the chimney uh, to warm it up. Uh, and we feel comfortable with it. And that is what we should do every time we feel lost. We feel that we are no longer ourselves. We are being blown away by events. Uh, that is what the Buddha called uh, going home to the island within. Uh, close the six uh, windows and stay inside with your breathing. And you will be calm, you will see more clearly and uh, when uh, you feel safe, you clear, and you may like to open one, one window to see what is uh, going on. This should be a practice uh, taken by everyone when they don't feel um, mm -hmm. like they are themselves. They're losing themselves in the situation, in the environment and closing the sixth sense door is a, a practice. And uh, when you focus your attention on your in-breath and out-breath, and just pay attention to just that, and then the six doors will be closed by themselves. And we are warm inside. Uh, and the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha are without inside. The Dharma is your mindfulness generated by mindful breathing. It can show you, uh, it will bring you the light. And uh, the Dharma is your breathing in mindfulness. It's a real Dharma, it's true Dharma. 
you are protected by the Buddha, which is mindfulness. You are protected by the Dharma, which is uh, your mindful breathing. And then the Buddha and the Dharma, when the Buddha and the Dharma is there, your five skandhas, mm, which is uh, body, feelings, perceptions, mental formations, it is like a Sangha and you operate uh, in harmony. The Sangha is inside. So if you are, you take refuge in the three jewels, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, you are safe, you are in peace. And uh, to, to pronounce the, the sentence, I take refuge in the Buddha, in the Dharma, in the Sangha, is not the same. You might pronounce that, but you don't do it. Now you don't have to pronounce that sentence. You just follow your in-breath and breathe in and out mindfully. And then the Buddha, the Dharma and Sangha just uh, manifest in you as the refuge and you are safe. And they practice that. In difficult moments, it's a disturbing situation. They always practice that mindful breathing and go home to himself and get the protection of the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. Anywhere you can do that. When, when there is fear, anger, confusion, despair, uh, we should take refuge in the three jewels just by uh, the practice of uh, mindful breathing. And you will see the effect. So let us for maybe extending it today. Let us for about 10 minutes take refuge in our true home within. So for 10 minutes we'll just, whether we stray or not stray, it doesn't matter, in the middle thoughts may come. And still we will bring back our focus to the breath and be home. So let's do that for 10 minutes. So using this clinging to the breath, we are cutting through all the mental images, formations, overwhelming situations that may be there. We are just cutting through all of this, clinging to the breath.
and just like in the game of rugby if you see you have the ball in the hand and you are trying to reach to the other goal post and many people are trying to stop you take the ball away from you and these are our so called important thoughts important things to attend in the mind and they will call for your attention they will ask you to leave the breath and look at me look at me but you won't leave the ball you won't leave the breath So instead of making all the other things in the head which wants to make them important to us what's important is just to be home So things may be unfixed in the outward situations, out of my control. Things are not like what I want them to be, and yet I am home. because I want to be home. And sadness may be there, all kinds of feelings, confusion, doubts may be there and parallelly I can be home. Or even joy, happiness can be there. And I am home. And in this ever-changing flux of things and happenings and moods and thoughts, there is one thing which can be my support always, which is being home to myself.
restlessness may be there and I am home. So just last one minute. Yeah, would anyone want to share anything, any reflection or anything else? Yeah, Namaste uh, Monica ji. Namaste ji. Yes, please. Uh, I'm uh, summing up my observations and uh, just sharing here. Uh, so what Gita calls equanimity or that composure uh, that we settle into uh, or through, uh, by using different tools. So breath is one of the tools. Likewise, the similar kind of experience uh, one can get because uh, what I realized from these talks and little bit of very little bit of uh, experience is that uh, when you do work also in such a way, when I'm working, I'm concentrating only on my work. Then I become one with the work. Uh, I'm, I forget uh, the remaining physicalities or the other kind of thoughts that come. That is one example. The other example is simply uh, getting involved in one activity or something which gives you one concentration on a single object as uh, Tigna Khan is mentioning. Uh, so these are what I have come to observation is that these are different tools that we can use. However, breath is an all-weather tool uh, because it is available with us all the time. <laughs> Uh, so this is what I feel is one of the observations which I made. And uh, even in difficult situations, so for example, doing music or getting involved inside every note of the music that is being played, that also brings one-pointed concentration. So does work, so does uh, breath. So this has been my observation. I just uh, am sharing. Maybe you, anyone can validate uh, that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Dhavalji. Yeah. Anyone else? Good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, you, you shared a beautiful uh, example of you know this guy call it really helps me because you know the uh, uh, as we said mind was not you know stopping with something you know not not uh, it was not a lot of to do with the breath but uh, uh, when I started trying this and it really helped thank you so much yeah at least for two three seconds it is stopping maybe yes. slowly pain of my but very, very, very beautiful, very useful example. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sorry, there was a bit of background noise, but I got what you mean. You you were sharing that 
द रग्बी बॉल एग्जाम्पल रियली हेल्प है I can't hear you at all. Yeah, Sardha ji, I can't hear you now at all. Earlier, I was able to make sense of what you are saying, but your voice is—I uh, don't know—some background noise, a, a lot of background noise. Voice connected with the speaker. But yeah, speaker. now it's good. Now it's good. Now I've taken the speaker. Yeah. No, what I was saying before that, I was struggling a lot to. Uh, bring the mind to you know the breath as you always say it it was very it was going here and there here and there but you know lot of thoughts but as i started doing with this you know rugby ball example it really helped thank you so much i'll try the whole day <laughs> thank you beautiful example yeah sometimes the small things can help us you know beautiful yeah thank you Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thoughts that did pop up once or twice, but your words didn't let me go astray. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Sham. Thank you for sharing. So one thing I want to share on what Thawal Ji was sharing in the beginning. Yeah. Of course, anything can be uh, used as a support for one pointed attention, and many masters have also. at times recommended for example if you know we heard this example of ajan cha a student came to him and he said that what do i do i am so angry all the time and he said uh, use your anger as the support so instead of breath as a support for meditation or one pointed attention you use anger as a support uh, and one again tries to focus and recreate kind of in front the anger and put it as a support so i totally agree with that that yes one can use if it works but parallelly that's not the only thing that's uh, going to be done in meditation uh, using breath as a support is the beginning so we are all beginners here and that's why we again and again in gather our attention as you were sharing uh, with breath or body sensations or maybe the rising and falling of the tummy anything what is important is not the support so neither is my uh, i don't know the music note that i am using for support that important neither is the breath important what is important is the awareness which is looking at the breath so slowly as i grow in my practice instead of like looking at this breath or the work or anger or the music note as you were sharing i become aware of being aware and stay there as spacious awareness just there open receptive awake i am taking stance as spacious awareness and the spacious awareness allows all to come and all to go it doesn't stick to anything like when we sit for meditation we see that the mind out of habits sticks to certain thoughts and certain people in the thoughts you know it sticks it grasps so the idea is slowly as all of us you know are already doing we expand in our practice and for example if i'm sitting for 10 minutes the first 5 minutes i sit pointed at the breath or music note or anything and then the next 5 minutes i can actually expand the practice further and stay just as the one who is looking so stay just as the spacious awareness and all the thoughts and rising and falling of images where is it happening it's happening in awareness it's like a huge ocean that i become of awareness in which all can rise and disappear yeah sardha ji anything from you yeah i yeah, am monica first i understood the first 5 minutes uh, you said what what is the second sentence i didn't get it 
yeah so i said the first 5 minutes we bring our focus back to the breath again and again again and again or any other object of support that you may be using and in the next 5 minutes we look at the one who is looking now the object of attention doesn't matter okay because there would be many objects in attention say for example a noise comes but who are you you are this awareness which knows the noise okay for example again you become aware of the breath who are you the one who is aware of the breath so i'm saying that we can practice with this also that in the first 5 minutes we stabilize our stance with the breath or 10 minutes and then in the next 5 or 2 minutes we stay as open spacious awareness because many a times it can happen that being so pinpointed you know it's like we are it's it may seem that we are just narrowing ourselves and just rejecting everything you know only breath 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 but that's not the idea breath is just used as a support to stabilize that's why they call it shamata practice in buddhism they call it shamata practice because we are stabilizing as dhaval ji was sharing in gathering our attention and why are we doing that slowly we expand in the practice and we take stance as the spacious awareness which allows all the events and sense perceptions to come and go and come and go and come and go thoughts to come and go images to come and go feelings to come and go who am i i am this spacious open awareness which looks at things thank you yeah i always doubt you know i always had a doubt whether i will be able to stay with the breath for longer time because you know mind will never as uh, you always say mind is a monkey <laughs> it jumps 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 and jumps but after this example today morning i got you know very beautiful point mm. so that and this you can as you said you know that i'll try this whole day the whole day thoughts will come to flood us feelings will come to flood us but we just have to remain home if that example helps then using that example just to cling to the breath and stay home because whenever we are home if there are decisions to be taken we have to speak a word out of our mouth it will be a word which won't harm others you know if i am home and speaking it out yeah, yeah. so monika ji uh, i really like that rugby example which you gave and also uh, one of the things uh, another observation there is that uh, if you actively listen to anything that also comes the person down and makes them one because you, active listening is different from i'm just sitting and listening like passively look, listening to you but when i actively listen uh in here and now then then i'm just with that sentences and that also brings so various tools you're absolutely right you have various tools some tools may allow you to settle in quickly some tools will take time i think one has to as you rightly pointed out uh one has to go beyond the tools because a tool is just a tool uh, as a means not the uh, end result uh, but different people can take different time to grasp the tool and uh, uh, use it effectively Uh, but yeah and mother also the mother says work done in two true spirit is also meditation so sometimes i find that my work itself becomes uh, uh, it brings that poise uh, and then i don't know what i'm speaking it just comes out naturally so maybe that is one of the things i, I i'm i'm just sharing i do not know really but yeah 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 totally with you dabal ji yeah thank you thank you for expressing it out So, any last comments, anyone?
okay so i'm assuming there is nothing more so in that case wishing us all happy practice and yeah let's let's keep ourselves home throughout yeah thank you thank you thank you, thank you very much so much thank you bye bye thank you